Hello, gorgeous seekers, and welcome to our moon magic discussion for the Scorpio new moon on November 15th. This is such a healing, soothing, kind, loving, honest, clear new moon. It's one of the simpler moon's cycles, energies we have to work with this year. And I think for that reason, it is a very blessed and special moment to take in the middle of November, this time of year, as we start to close out 2020, to reconcile in ourselves everything we have learned, everything we have gone through, all the stress, all the uncertainty, and to open up our field of vision to what is next. Let me get a little bit more settled in here before I continue on. So, this new moon is happening at 23 degrees of Scorpio, and it's happening on November 15th. The sun and the moon are going to meet up in Scorpio. We'll be having this moon just the last week of Scorpio season. And it doesn't have a lot of complicated aspects to it. It's happening right after Mars goes direct, just two days earlier on the 13th. So this moon in many ways to me is kind of a closing out ceremony in some ways for that Mars retrograde, which went for just over two months, starting in early September. And I think, you know, Mars retrograde brings a lot of change very quickly uh, in our lives over the course of two months. Um, whether that has been experienced for you as a lot of swift movement or a lot of slowdown really depends on who you are. Uh, Mars retrograde sh reshuffles the deck a bit and has change and shift come about from inside out often. So this new moon really is a time to reflect. It is a time to heal and reconnect. And that message is only bolstered by the aspects that are in play during this new moon. And it's a sextile. The, the new moon is sextiling. So the sun and the moon are sextiling uh, Jupiter and Pluto. Jupiter especially, um, when this new moon goes exact, it is going to exactly sextile Jupiter at 23 degrees of Capricorn. Now, anytime Jupiter's in the mix and the moon is in the mix and they're in a flowing state, this is going to be a moon that is benefic, that is kind, that is warm, that wants to expand whatever is uh, being touched on. And this new moon, for me, working with Scorpio energy is working with healing. It's working with going to the deep bones of something and coming to a place of understanding and healing and deep self-acceptance. Um, accepting the parts of ourselves that we feel are taboo or unseen or hidden. So it's a very healing time and Jupiter is here to help expand that and explore that and bring us back to a state of calm. I think this sextile working in Scorpio and Capricorn like it is, it's not about static electricity. It's about a very soothing, calming dip below the surface into a space that feels a little bit calmer, a little bit more in that space that I think we all aspire to getting to, which is so deeply connected to that state of grace, right? This is so many of us who do this work and connect with this energy. We're always looking for that state of grace, you know, even whether it's in the small things we do and the big things we do. I think this Jupiter new moon sextile really brings about more of that energy of grace and is a wonderful time to open and expand yourself to what is next. Um, the other sextile that's happening here, you know, Jupiter-Pluto conjunction has been going on for a few weeks and it's starting to ease off as Jupiter goes forward, but Pluto at 22 degrees is another sextile to this new moon. And once again, this is very benefic because when Pluto's sextile and working with us, it's reminding us of the empowerment that comes from and the riches that come from beneath the surface, from the non-obvious, from the places inside of ourselves that are a little bit more hidden, a little bit more obscure, maybe not always the first thing we put on display. And those things are very valuable. So I think this moon in many ways, it's emphasizing what we connect with on an internal level and not just what we do externally. And I think this is important because there's been so much externally. We're looking for okays and safety from the external this year, and it hasn't worked very well for many of us, right? 
And this moon is bringing us back to some of these simple truths because these are the conversations that are happening. The sextile is the center point of this entire new moon phase. And because of that, it's bringing us back to a place of security in a center point inside, right? And you know, when we really tap into that place, it's quiet, it's calm. You know, when we sink down in meditation below the surface, below the waves, the crashing of the waves and, and the movement of all the fish and the dolphins, and we're way down there, right? When we get to that place, the, the actions and the thoughts we take from that place tend to be nurturing to our lives. They tend to be nurturing to our communities. They tend to be the things that are a salve to whatever it is that is chafing us. Um, and that's kind of the rule. Anytime we decide we want to go into that space, we come out with whether it's the tiniest step or the biggest step or the biggest revelation, we come out with a grain of something that we need. And I think that's exactly what this moon is pointing us to. New moons are beautiful for reconnecting to our dreams, to our visions, to what we really wish. Um, and I have a few visuals that came to mind before we start pulling cards today. One of the first visuals that came to mind for me around this new moon was sitting on a new moon night. And you know, if you live somewhere where there's not a lot of light pollution, you can see the Milky Way and you can see all these stars. I mean, it is just mesmerizing to look at the sky if you live somewhere dark enough. And the way you can see the entire map playing out. And I imagine that at a soul level. You know, I imagine this moon kind of being that clarity. The fog is lifted, the clouds have blown away, and we're looking at this star map. And as we can see that clarity, we can see that star, that point of light that path that we want to walk, that trail we want to walk, that is meaningful to us. And we can really come back to that space. And it's quiet, and it's focused, and it's soul driven. And that is one of the strongest images that I got for this new moon. And I think many of us have forgotten or felt far away from the ability to even know where to begin to ask for healing, to even know where to begin to ask for adventure or joy or growth. Um, and we've had to start in very small places throughout the year. And I think this new moon is inviting us to, yes, start in the small places of joy and healing and prayer, but also be a little bit open to possibly uh, thinking and starting to tap into the bigger visions you have because this new moon is also you know one of the last new moons before we have a huge switch in energy into aquarian energy which is so healing it's so much about coming back into um, more of a collective love and understanding and out of some of this heavier hitting sometimes authoritarian and very stalwart energy that we've had in Capricorn. And that for that reason, I think this new moon is a perfect place to reconcile what has gone down in 2020 and what we have learned over the last few years and to open up and be curious about next year. So in that way, I think it's a very important moon. And I think the way that we connect with this is to go quiet is to sink down below the waves, is to listen to the less obvious things, and you know, start to find those words of prayer for healing, for moving forward, for finding ways to build our community. Hierophant came out. So to me, when I think about this moon, I just feel a softness. Um, a very deep softness and also just a nod you know it's very ceremonial in a way this moon just a nod a recognition right a recognition of the pain of this year a recognition of the joy that wants to leap forward a recognition of the depth and complexity of life and a recognition of the simplicity of life as well five of pentacles okay I think, I think this is a very bittersweet time in many ways because there is that hope and that joy for the future and that, that hope and joy that we can continue to heal as a planet, as, a, as people, as communities, as individuals. 
Knight of Pentacles. Lots of earth energy here. Um, really interesting. And um, there's also this, this sense of, you know, how to start going to that place after a time of shaking. Um, so the Hierophant, this is really interesting. The Hierophant sometimes represents that authority figure that says, I have the wisdom to give to you and therefore, you know, you have to come to me to give you that wisdom. But the deeper message for me when I see Hierophant is that we have to step into our own leadership space, right? Like we have to self-mother, self-father, self-lead in our lives. What does a healthy leader look like? A healthy leader comes in and says, you know, this is what we need to do. Okay, here's, here's what we are working with. Here's what we know. Here are our questions. Okay, right? Doesn't get ruffled up, doesn't get riled up, doesn't get feathers ruffled, right? And, um, and also, you know, Hierophant is, to me, an initiator of coming into something deeper, a deeper wisdom, a deeper learning. This is a very scholarly energy that wants to learn, that wants to connect the pieces, that wants to understand something at a deeper level and not just from a quick, fast space, right? A Hierophant is also going to ask us to, yes, to tap into our own connection to divine and to trust ourselves enough to do that again, where there may have been a shaking of faith this year. This is a moon that is asking us to come back to that. And I think it speaks directly to this five of pentacles, right? Where we feel lack, where we feel shut out from the divine, where we feel as though we've been kind of cut off from our ability to ask for what we want, to ask for that healing, to ask for that joy, to connect with that joy, to feel that joy. Um, and this moon, I think, is really giving us that permission slip to just dip our toes into that water again, to reconnect. So if you're noticing that you, you're sitting in this moon and you're tired, and it's been a long haul, you're tired from Mars retrograde, you're tired from the pandemic, you're tired from the stress politically, and everything just feels like, how, where do I even begin? And I just feel this weariness and this sense of being far from the divine, far from goddess, far from God, far from however you connect with spirit. That's okay. <laughs> it's totally okay. You're going to want to start in very simple places. And that's also what the Knight of Pentacles is saying here. The you know, Knight of Pentacles does not move quickly, right? He, he makes small changes toward what he wants. And he's a little cautious, a little less likely to take big tumultuous leaps forward. And sometimes we don't like seeing this card because we want to have big dramatic leaps forward. But here's the medicine of the Knight of Pentacles that I think many of us are craving at this time actually, which is to start somewhere small, to start somewhere simple, to start in that little seed phase, right? Whether that is to just, you know, put away that pile of shirts that you haven't put away or to re sit down and read or take a break from technology or, uh, you know, write yourself a letter, whatever tiny kernel comes for you. The Knight of Pentacles assures us that in those small steady steps and taking the time to listen and taking the time to slow down, that is where divine wisdom, self-parenting, guidance, healing moving forward starts always it doesn't always have to be flashy and fiery and big and wild and raucous and um suddenly you're full of joy and you're dancing it often starts in the smallest moments and it starts in those moments when we do feel cut off i think sometimes we think when we feel cut off when we feel tired when we feel weary when we don't know how to pray anymore when we don't know how to connect with god anymore we don't know how to connect with spirit anymore, that that's the place where we are the most in poverty. But what I find is that's the point at which we release our resistance to asking for help. And we can ask for that wisdom to come in and that's where the healing begins. And this new moon really asks us to sit with both sides of that part of ourselves, right? And what a beautiful place to sit. 
There's no need to run. There's no need to rush away from it. There's no need to dread the moon. It is very much here to help us and nurture us and nourish us into this next phase from a calm, centered, clear, loving place, right? That energy is extremely valuable. And it's energy that is magnetic, powerful, healing, and sustainable. So it's an important moon to tap into that level of wisdom. And to be honest, the more that you can tap into that wisdom here in this new moon, that's the wisdom and that's the energy that is going to work best in 2021, right? So uh, this is a great place to just check in with it, tap in with it. We don't have to get everything done during a new moon, but it is a great place to look at that star map, open your heart up a little bit to your prayers, to your joy, to what is next. Honor the part of yourself that has maybe felt a bit disconnected, weary, frazzled, fried, frayed. Give it a chance to bathe in this these soft waters. Um, we are going to be doing an activation for this new moon over on my Patreon. We're also going to be doing some exercises for closing out Mars retrogrades. So if you're looking for a little more support at this time, I would love to see you over there. We have a great time, a beautiful community of people with wonderful thoughts and contributions. Um, you can also find me on my website and my Instagram. And of course, my cloak is covering it up, but Pink Lynn's gorgeous jewelry is always on her Etsy shop. Go check out what she's creating these days. I am going to get cozy here for the next few days while we're leading up to this new moon and just stay inside and read and think and come back to the place that I've been talking about. I think we all need a moment of grace at this time and I hope that you give that to yourself, you check in with that star map, you let your heart open a little bit and I just wish for so much healing and love for all of you. I am feeling the hope and the twinkle of 2021 and the magic that comes with what is next. I'm excited to dive into Aquarian energy. I will talk to you all so soon for our next full moon and I'm sending you all my love.